Good morning, everyone. I was talking to the equipment, not you guys, but also good morning to all you as well. Make sure you like the video. It's been a terrible start to the day for me. I don't know where my working gloves are. It's cold and I don't know if we have any dry beans to cut. Maybe they're in here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes. Tucked in between the hydraulic oil and the operator's manual for the grain cart. Exactly where you should always keep your gloves. As is tradition, we have morning service on our drapers. Need to look over the combines. Check the oil on the grain cart just to make sure we don't run her without some blood in it. We've got about 500 bushels of beans on the cart that we need to get off. Oh yes, she's a beauty, all right. Cutter bar check on the 735 FD on dad's combine. There's a sickle that's broken. The head's actually in surprisingly good shape right now. One sickle needs changed over there. That's a quick fix. And this will be off to the races again today. That is assuming that we find dry beans to cut. That's a, a big if at this point. Look who finally decided to show up to work. Marty the boss. If I recall correctly, this thing was a little low on engine oil yesterday. Still kind of on the low side, but it's not using any. Wouldn't hurt to put a splash in when we get home. Interstate's already booming this morning. The backbone of America, that's what truckers are. I like to consider farmers like the core of America. Obviously a backbone's important, but it's nothing without the core. We provide the basic essentials for everyone else to kind of do whatever they please. And that's what makes this country so successful. It's got a lot of good infrastructure, good farms, and a lot of really good people. Get it fixed already? Yeah. Grain cart ready to go. Combine ready to go. Katie's combine. We're gonna see. Right half is good. And the left half is good. Huh. It's our lucky day. The head's in perfect operating shape for the day. Gonna check the oil. I will say though that the aroma of this combine still has not improved since having a skunk ran through it three days ago. Not the most pleasant to be by. Not expecting any surprises on the oil on this combine. This engine's pretty reliable. Yep. Plenty. Here comes the truck so we can offload the grain cart. I don't know what he's doing. I already checked his oil. Ah, he's doing his warranty work on that bolt that came out on the engine bay cover. have a tendency to pick up moisture overnight. These beans were already wet yesterday when we were picking them during the dry part of the day. Hopefully these aren't 16% from sitting in the cart all night. Okay, that's gonna be it for the video everyone. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. See you later. Totally kidding. I do not think we're gonna have any beans that are gonna cut anytime soon. We're thinking about just abandoning this patch for now. They were so wet yesterday that there's really no way they dry at all today. What Dad and I are going to do is go scout some fields, see what's next on the agenda. We're headed about 20 miles to the west of the previous field. We've got the same variety of soybeans planted a few days earlier. We're gonna check and see if there's a possibility that those cut today. There's our beans. They look drier from the road as you get out into the field. A lot more green pods on them. Pods are tough. The beans themselves are dry. They're about the same as the beans yesterday, which would make sense because these are the same variety, Pioneer 32 T26 Enlist soybeans. I think we're gonna have to try them. Logistically speaking, it's a tougher decision here than the field we came from because this is 15 miles plus away from our home farm. So it requires a lot more leg work to get the combines over. May have to be a little more hesitant and responsible with our decision making so we don't waste a bunch of diesel fuel moving equipment. I don't see any green out there. Those do look a lot drier than that other field. And they're closer to home. Do you want to get out there and look at them? Or just bring the combine? Up? I think we just bring the combine up unless it make you feel better to come look at them. The clown car has arrived to the field to get the equipment. <laughs> Ready for part, reel in and out of the way. Dusty this morning. She's out of here. Come on. Ah. Free. Combines are getting unhooked. We're ready to hit the road. Moving about five miles north.
head to the next field. We usually give the front combine about a five to 10 minute head start. That way he can get there, get hooked on and open up the field. That way when I arrive with the grain cart, the other draper comes and the other combine, we're not just lined up on the road blocking traffic. We can pull in and do our business in the field. It has been about five minutes though, so we're gonna head that way. I had planned on going straight to the field, but then dad radioed that he was taking 780 by home to fuel it up, which shouldn't be too surprising. I'm still gonna have to wait for him to get to the field, so I might as well get some fuel. The boss isn't always the best at communicating what he's doing. I'm glad he at least radioed because I would have been at the field waiting, wondering where he got lost. Now he's headed to the field. Or at least that's what I'm anticipating. Who knows where he's gonna stop at next. Maybe he'll stop by the local Casey's and get a snack. We are gonna get a tractor snack though. Some good old diesel fuel. I don't really need fuel, but I'm here. I might as well do it. The grain cart uses about the least amount of fuel of everything, especially in soybean harvest. Now in corn, we do kind of amplify those numbers a little bit. The fuel economy is not as good because I have to move a lot more bushels and I have to be a lot quicker doing so, which adds extra fuel regardless of the bushels. That being said, I would say on soybeans, I may be averaging 0.1 to 0.2 gallons per acre of fuel. In corn, it's probably closer to 0.3 or 0.4. Regardless if it's a tractor or a combine, they all love to drink diesel fuel. I expressed my concerns about the moisture of those soybeans I loaded in that semi. I thought we were taking them to commercial storage. We ended up actually just loading them here, putting them as our first load in our soybean bin. You have much more flexibility when you're putting them in your own bin. You're not gonna be docked. As long as they're not excessively wet, like 18 plus percent, they will average out with the dry beans that we put on top throughout the season, blow some air through them. Once they come out, we'll be hauling out 13% beans. So that's what we ended up doing with those. We weighed them, kept track of them, and put them in this bin. That is the first load of the year for this bin. Pretty good distribution from the spreader up top. Ready for a lot more beans. Awful. Okay, this time I'm serious about heading to the field. We're off. dust in the air and the combine hasn't stopped. So I say the moisture is about where we want it. Yeah, still a little chewy. They may need a few hours. These are a Pioneer 35T15E Enlist soybean. Planted the 27th of April, I believe. Later season than the 3-2s we were cutting yesterday, but that early planting usually gets you some dryness come harvest time. Planting date matters, folks. I'll be going to a commercial elevator, so I do have to have that moisture 14.5% or lower, preferably sub 14%. That 13 to 14% is kind of the money range, in my opinion, for the optimal amount of dockage, but also total yield. Once you get drier to 13%, you're giving up money in the field because you're not using your allocated free moisture, and they don't compensate you for that. You don't get a premium for your beans being too dry. In my opinion, maybe they should do that, but that's not the way they do it. I don't know if they ever have, probably never will. It's too easy of money for them to blend beans off. Green out here, but are we getting them all? Wow, that's still damp. I'd say these beans are gonna need another hour to dry. Not too bad. boss is letting his combine cool down said maybe an hour to two to get some of the moisture off of these beans we we'll grabbed lunch now it's time to move the trucks to the field <laughs> semis on the north end of this field because of the relationship between the height of the road and the height of the field is very close. That makes my life much easier as a grain cart operator. So I'm going to wait for the combine to cut this outside pass of beans. That way I'm not in his way at all. We don't run the risk of taking some paint off the truck. He's cutting around them in a strange pattern, acting as if they're wet. Are we still getting them all? Yeah, I'd say. We've been getting the green ones out. That's good. The 
The combine's indicating about 13 to 14% moisture, exactly what we're looking for. Although they smell pretty wet out here. The scent in the air is very moist foliage, wet beans going through the combine. Could be residual moisture on the stock still. It almost be nice to have like a roller on the backside of the draper that rolls over all of these short, little, stubby soybean stalks. They're actually pretty sharp. Could probably go a long way towards increasing tire life for both our combine grain cart and our future tillage operations in this field. Katie's arrived, so combine number two is gonna be firing up here shortly. We're gonna be off to the races. Brian Davis from Alliance Tractor is gonna come look at that yield monitor. So if I radio you, come pick them up. She's headed to cut on the north end with dad. And me? Well, I'm gonna go find a nice, comfortable place to take an early afternoon nap. Cause why not? This looks like a good place for that. Oh, perfect. John Deere Operations Center allowing us to do remote display access on the S780 Combine. I like to call it the nosy neighbor feature. We're running 12% moisture right now. Looks like 11 to 13 is kind of the range. We're off to the races, that's for sure. We'll get these real wet beans from a couple hours ago that were on the car from this field onto the truck. That way we don't get screwed over at the elevator. What are they on both sides of them? Like 13, but there's 16 through here. I'm going 3.1, Andy. Combines aren't moving very fast typically means high yields. Instant metrics on the operations center show that he's burning over two gallons an acre right now cutting these beans. The moisture on the plants does not help because it takes more power for them to thresh. High yields also require more gallons per acre to thresh to separate to get to the grain tank. We're happy to burn another gallon an acre if that means our beans are yielding 10 plus bushels an acre more than normal. My average on my screen says 14.89. I've hardly seen anything under 14. And there goes Marty. We are experiencing some difficulties out here in this field because the beans are still wetter than we'd like them to be in terms of their moisture content. Running 14% plus, 15 on the high side. I'm gonna get a little bit more off of Katie's combine, top off that truck. We're going to take it to the elevator and see what the moisture content is. If it's acceptable, we're going to keep cutting. If they're too wet, we're probably going to have to pull off this field. Ah, oh, soybeans. What a treat they are to harvest. It's like the yin and yang. Sometimes they're drier than you think they're going to be. Other times they're wetter than you think they're going to be. But they're never just quite right. He's ready to hit the road, Jeff. We've got one of the tech specialists from Alliance Tractor out here looking at this S670, seeing if we can get this yield monitor calibration figured out. It's throwing 40s across this field for bushel averages, while the S780's throwing 90s. We can do a lot of post-calibration fixing on the yield data on the John Deere Operations Center. It's helpful, though, just to have it pretty close from the start. Primary data is always better than edited data, in my opinion. They're cutting. So maybe that means they have a successful calibration load going right now. I'm ready for them. I already wrote down my scale weight. I've got two things of bad news. One, the first try on the calibration did not work, even for Brian, the expert. And two, Jeff's load at the elevator tested 15.6%. That means that if we were going to have him dump there, we're gonna take a pretty major dockage percentage-wise. So I think we're gonna circle him back home, just not dump. We're gonna put these beans in the bin and blow some air on them. Ultimately, that means that our time in this field is going to be short-lived. We're trying to take them to commercial storage. They're way too wet across the middle. We just didn't see that coming. So we might cut another couple of rounds, maybe another truck or two and call it quits for this field. Maybe try another one. We're loading Chris, keeping track of the bushels and sending them home to the bin. That's the really nice thing about having open bean storage space at home. If we get out to a field, bite off more than we can chew, we can just take the trucks home as opposed to the elevator, put them in the bin. Like I said earlier, by the time we come to haul them out, a bin full of beans, a different moisture, usually averages where we want them to, about 12 to 13%. 29,380 pounds headed to the north 36 foot bin back at Jeff's house. Might as well pile on some more bad news. Brian from Alliance Tractor said that one of our sensors, I don't know if it's our mass flow sensor or whatever the main sensor 
that senses the yield is bad. That's probably why it's not tabulating correctly. So we have to replace that if we want good yield data out of that combine. Yeah, those beans are a little wet, aren't they? That's surprising. It's been decided that we're just gonna go ahead and cut the whole field. It's about a short 70 acres, so 70 times 80, let's say 5,600 bushels. We'll stuff them in the bin, throw some air on them. They should be fine. Should we be waiting for them to mature just that final bit? Eh, probably. But you can do these things when you put them in the bin. Duty calls. I guess he's just gonna dump straight on me. Loading trucks, loading trucks. That's what I do best, loading trucks. I had just enough on this cart to load that truck, but I had to stop because Jeff got his truck hung up by not having enough weight on it. There's an art to this. 150 bushels ought to do it, right? Hope so, because that's all I got. There you go. Those darn junky Pioneer Enlist beans. They're only doing 100 bushel an acre in that spot. Field average, which he just pulled out of my way so I can't see, is about 86 dry right now. Not too bad. Now I can finish what I started before Jeff interrupted me with his hung up truck problems. That's what you're gonna do with those truck drivers. <laughs> As the grain car driver, I can tell when we're in good beans. If I'm busy in soybeans, they gotta be putting some bushels out. Uh, what more could you ask for this afternoon? We got high yielding beans, a massaging seat in the 8R370, beautiful weather, and go fuel from our good friends at Canada Dip CBD. It's a combination of CBD and a few other ingredients, including caffeine. Perfect afternoon pick-me-up and an even better alternative to traditional chewing tobacco. If you're interested in it, I do have a 20% discount code. Use Dole, D-O-L-E, or follow the link in the video. Try it out if you're looking to kick some bad habits and start out with something not quite as necrotic or malicious against your body. If this piques your interest at all, at least go over and do a little bit of research, maybe find out if it's for you or not. We are well over halfway down with this field. I think we need to chew through about another 20 acres and we should be headed home. We're on the last couple of rounds of this field. I'm on your left, Katie. I don't feel like I should have to tell her that at this point, considering how long we've ran in tandem out in these fields. I mean, we've been doing this for five plus years. It still never fails though that I have to radio her quite frequently to make sure she puts the auger out so I can get under her. All right, we pretty much got this wrapped up. Katie's gonna dump off the rest of hers on the grain cart. Dad's got a little strip to cut. While he takes care of that, I'm gonna go ahead and stage the head carts. Might as well do something useful with my time. counts one down one to go you know they're a lot easier to put on if you don't park them crooked katie i know that's why i said that <laughs> there's times where there's not very much going on on the farm and there's other time periods where there's a lot of moving parts at once a few tries especially if they don't line the trailer up straight it helps the operators a lot when these are lined up straight up and down Katie's yet to receive her marching orders I believe I have enough to load Chris on this grain cart right now I can't get 600 bushels of beans on him so I may have too many beans on the cart to put on the truck. 
which is never a bad problem to have. These beans have yielded phenomenally. 33,960 pounds, and Dad still has more on his combine. Zero chance I get these on the truck. Doesn't hurt to try, though. You can't say I didn't try. On 93.80 on the scale, so a shade over 150 bushels. We are going in home, only five miles. I think we can just take that weight with us. We'll just go 30 miles an hour as opposed to 33. Why do I always get left with the fun projects? Like ratchet strapping the heads down. Oh well, we all play an important role here. I didn't even strap it down out of spite, because I'm a bad farm hand. Bounce our way out of the field. Always taking up the road, inconsiderate farmers. Let's go this way so I don't have to pass. We decided to take the scenic route, and not regretting it one bit. Some of you may recognize where we are right now, just across the lane from the first field of soybeans we cut. These are the same 35T15 Pioneer soybeans. A little bit of green on the edge. That's uh, from compaction last fall. I kind of had a mule trail through there with the grain cart. The draper's unstrapped. Now we wait about 30 more seconds because Marty's right there. Katie just ran me back for the green cart and Chris back for the draper. I think we're gonna go ahead and cut another field of these beans. I did the math and the S780 with the active yield is about spot on this field. Made 85 to 86 bushels per acre dry. That's pretty darn good for those 35 T15 beans. Well, that combine's gone, so we must be cutting beans. The green cart driver is officially holding up harvest right now. Not the wisest place to stand, Marty. operators would live too long if it weren't for bad grain cart drivers. We gotta keep the population balanced. Wow, it's gonna be a beautiful evening to cut some soybeans. Cinematic, almost.
the sun has set below the horizon. The beans are still dry-ish, moisture-wise, but they're getting very difficult to cut, starting to become very tough. Discourages the combine operators from wanting to roll too far into the night. Now, if we'd have a nice breeze, typically we can roll quite a bit later. The moral of the video, if you can't tell at this point, is that soybeans are extremely sensitive to moisture. Even small changes make a vast difference in their moisture content. Ambient temperature matters, the sunshine matters, the wind matters. Everything you have to take into account and things can change rather quickly. Now, soybeans aren't gonna hit you blindsided by any means with some big surprises unless they're just drier than you're expecting when you got to the field. But overall, the moisture content of them varies so much that the harvesting decisions you make can change pretty rapidly. Katie's looking for a secluded and safe place for that S670 to cool down and shut down for the night. I'm gonna load this truck and I'm gonna be done too. There's no denying that it was a beautiful evening. Hope you guys enjoyed that drone footage. the three twos over west were wetter than we thought we were going to be. I really was under the impression that we weren't going to have any beans that were going to cut, but we managed to find 100 plus acres of three fives that were uh, dry enough, not really, but dry enough to put in the bin. As long as we're covering acres, that's good. Waiting time. That S780, she loved the fuel. Lots of diesel fuel. Take my two scale tickets. Old school weight tracking. Bye bye, green cart. See you tomorrow. Starting to get rather chilly outside right now, actually. I'm gonna start having to bring my car heart with me in the tractor. Even if I don't eat in the morning, I'm definitely needing it of an evening. Darn it, I thought there'd be a Rolls Royce waiting for us for the way home. We just get the old semi instead. Somewhere in here is a light switch. I literally cannot see. There we go. Let's get these beans in home. treated us with some nice spectacles these last couple nights. This part of the farm is more of Jeff's domain. He's manning the dump right now. Bin sites are a lot of things. Safe and quiet are not two of those things. You have to be very careful around here. You also have to yell if you want to talk to people. regardless of their position, doesn't play a crucial role to our harvesting operations. 
no different than springtime. Regardless of what your task is, everyone has to be successful in unison for the entire operation to move through acres. That's enough motivational team building pep talk. I think I'm gonna call it quits for the night. I am extremely appreciative of all of you who continue to tune in, show up, and support the channel. It means the world to me. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace.